Today's lesson is over 12.3, simplifying rational expressions. Um, rational expressions, or rational numbers rather, are those fractions like 5 ninths, 7 twelfths, 1 half. Remember, rational numbers are those that um, turn into decimals with a pattern. So repeating 3, like 0.333, so 1 third is a rational number. Um, or a decimal that ends, like 0.5, which would be 1 half. So a rational expression is when we have a variable in the denominator. So rational expressions have a variable in the denominator. So here are some examples of some rational expressions. And what we're going to do today is talk about how to simplify those. So a couple of things that we have to make sure of. That is, number one, um, we know that our denominator cannot be zero ever, so we know we can't divide by zero. Um, and we also know, um, like rational numbers, a rational expression is going to be in simplest form when the only common factors it has is a one. So no common factors left except a one in your numerator and denominator, and that's how you know you are done. So let's try some examples of this. So the first example, we're just gonna simplify each rational expression. And so what I want you to notice on this first one is that I have a monomial over a monomial. So remember that a monomial is something that is squeezed together. So when a coefficient is squeezed to a variable, that's still a monomial. It's still a single term. And so I can look at this um, as sort of like that coefficient is separate from that. And so what that means is if my coefficients are divisible by a common factor, I'm going to simplify that. And so I know that these are both divisible by 5. So this is going to become 3 over 5. And then remember we learned in our exponents chapter, if the bases are the same, then I can keep the base. And remember we can subtract our exponents. So x minus 10 would be negative 3. And we know that we cannot leave anything with a negative exponent where it is. We can't have a negative exponent. So just the b has a negative exponent, right? Because we know our 3 has an exponent of positive 1. So that 3 doesn't need to move, just the b. So my final answer would be a 3 on top and then 5b cubed on the bottom. Okay? Now in this second example, notice I have a monomial on top, but on the bottom, I don't have a monomial. I actually have a binomial. And remember what we've talked about, a binomial has a plus or minus sign it means that these terms are married. So I can't, for example, do something like this and say, oh, well, I know a six goes into itself once and goes into 12 two times. That does not work. A unless you're going to simplify every term by a six, you can't do that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, my monomial, there's nothing to do right now, but my binomial, I do notice that it has a common factor. And that common factor is a 3. So I'm going to take that 3 out. Remember when we write, have a common factor, we write it out, and then we have our parentheses. And what's left, so if I divided each of these by 3, I would have a C plus 2 left. Okay, so now I have 12C squared over 3 times the quantity C plus 2. Now I have a monomial and another monomial. This is a monomial. So again, those coefficients are both divisible by a three. So I'm going to take that out. So on top, I have four C squared over one, which I don't need to write, C plus two. And now the question of, can I mark out this C and take away one of these? The answer is no. Remember, because this is a binomial, it means it's married down here. I can't take things that are married and just simplify one of them and not the other. And so this would be my final answer in simplest form. My next example, notice this time I have a binomial on top and a binomial on the bottom. So I'm looking then, anytime I have anything bigger than a monomial, I'm looking for a common factor to take out of the group. So I'm going to see if there's anything I can take out of this group on top. 
and I notice that they have a two in common. So I'm gonna write down my two. I'm not just gonna put it in the air somewhere. I'm gonna write it down. And if I divided both of these by two, I would have left two m minus one. Okay, so I have this, two times the quantity, two m minus one over two m minus one. And here's the great thing. If your binomials are the same, top and bottom, they can cancel out. And so I'm just left with that monomial of two. Looking at D, I see this binomial on top. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it in standard form like this. And I notice that this binomial has a four in common. So I'm going to take it out. So I'm dividing each of those terms by four, right? And then on the bottom, this binomial doesn't have anything in common. So I'm just going to rewrite it as is. And my binomials are the same top and bottom, so they can be canceled out, and I'm just left with a four. All right, now we're gonna take it one step further. So this time, notice on the top, I have a binomial. On the bottom, I have three terms. That's a trinomial, okay? So I'm just gonna go one at a time. I'm gonna start on the top, and I'm gonna look and see if they have anything in common, and I'm noticing that they have a three in common. So I'm gonna write down three, and then what would be left is my x plus 4, okay? On the bottom, remember, a trinomial, multiply your a and your c. So I'm looking for factors of negative 20 that add, this is a negative 1 right here, add to negative 1. So if it's factors of a negative number, remember I need those signs to be opposites. So I know and they're gonna subtract, right? So it's gonna be five and four, and my five has to be negative to get out a negative one. And I can do shortcut factoring on this because my leading coefficient here is one. So shortcut, x is go in the front, and then I'm just gonna plug in my factors here that I chose, negative five, positive four. And if you'll notice, my binomials are the same top and bottom, so I'm left with three, over x minus 5. And there's my answer. Okay, going over here to f, I'm going to start at the top and look at this binomial. And I see that they have a 2 in common. So I'm going to take out this 2. And so I'm left with z minus 1 when I divide each of those by 2. And then on the bottom, so this is a trinomial. So again, I'm looking for factors of positive 3 that add to negative 4. And this is a positive 3, so my factor signs have to be the same. So that's going to be 3 and 1. And if I want to be a negative 4, they're both going to have to be negative. I can shortcut factor again. So z will go in the front and then minus three, minus one. And I notice that I do have two binomials that match top and bottom, so I'm left with two over z minus three. Okay, that concludes our lesson, and now you have your worksheet to work on. Let me know if you have questions.